Hello everyone, this is Paleo Nerd back with my very first creature profile. In this series, I pick a lesser known prehistoric animal and bring it into the spotlight to give it the appreciation it deserves. Now, I'll give a full profile of the animal going over its discovery, classification, appearance, diet, the environment it lived in, its behavior, as well as its extinction. I may also briefly go over any appearances the animal has made in pop culture, including documentaries, movies, TV shows, video games, or even books. Since it's Christmas, this video will serve as a holiday special, covering a prehistoric animal from the cold polar regions of our planet. Both the North and South Poles reach temperatures well below freezing today, to the point where hardly anything can survive. But that wasn't always the case. In fact, throughout Earth's history, the poles have frozen and thawed several times, allowing them to support a plethora of life. Today, we'll focus on the continent of Antarctica, more specifically, one of the animals that once made their home there. The first dinosaur from Antarctica to be named, and the most well-known dinosaur from the continent, Cryolophosaurus. This genus contains only one species, Cryolophosaurus eliotti, which translates to Elliot's frozen crested lizard. The genus name refers both to its discovery in Antarctica and the unique crest on its head which will be addressed more later. While the species name refers to Ohio State geologist David Elliot, the man who helped discover the first fossils of the animal. It was discovered on Mount Kirkpatrick in what is called the Hansen Formation, which has been dated from the Sinomurian to the Pleiensbachian ages of the early Jurassic period, about 194 to 188 million years ago. It is estimated to reach a length of 6 to 7 meters or 19 to 23 feet long, a height of 1.5 meters or 5 feet tall at the shoulder, in a weight of 465 kilograms or over half a ton, making it one of the largest predators of its time. Cryolophosaurus was initially discovered during an expedition to Mount Kirkpatrick led by David Elliott and William Hammer, a paleontologist who worked as a geology professor at Augustana College, Illinois, in 1991. Fossils were excavated at an altitude of 4 kilometers or over 2 miles above sea level and about 640 kilometers or 400 miles from the South Pole. The holotype specimen of Cryolophosaurus unearthed during this expedition consists of fragmentary remains of the skull, vertebra, ribs, hip, arms, and legs, with the remaining pieces being filled in from other related genera. The specimen was then formally named and described by Hammer and fellow paleontologist William Hickerson in 1994 in the journal Science. Ever since its discovery, the classification of Cryolophosaurus has, had been somewhat of a mystery, as features of the femur show similarities of, to early theropods, while the skull resembles much later theropods. When describing the animal, Hammer and Hickinson, along with many of their colleagues, considered the possibility of Cryolophosaurus being a ceratosaur or a belosaur, before ultimately placing Cryolophosaurus as an early member of Tetanure, a group which contains all theropods more closely related to birds than to ceratosaurus. Meanwhile, another paleontologist by the name of Paul Serino placed Cryolophosaurus in Allosauridae based on advanced features in the skull. A later study by Hammer and Hickinson seemed to show that Cryolophosaurus was closely related to two early theropods outside of Tetanure that lived around the same time, Dilophosaurus and Dracovanager, together forming a group called Dilophosauridae. However, this is no longer considered to be the case, and the most recent study in 2012 put Crylophosaurus as being closely related to Sinosaurus, a basal tetanurin that looks similar to Dilophosaurus but is not closely related. So as of right now, 
Cryolophosaurus is considered a basal tetanurin and may have been among the ancestors of Megalosaurus, Allosaurus, and even Solarosaurus. Cryolophosaurus was one of the largest theropods of its time, and while it was originally depicted with a heavily built Allosaur-like body, it is now commonly depicted as being much more lightly built with a long slender body. It had the typical proportions of a theropod and had the perfect adaptations for a predator, with a large skull filled with razor sharp teeth for slashing prey, long three fingered arms tipped with claws for holding prey, long legs built for chasing after quick and agile prey animals, and a long tail half which consisted of half of its body length that helped the animal maintain its balance while making sharp turns. But some adaptations aren't as obvious. For example, its top jaw has a notch in it similar to other th early theropods. This is believed to be an adaptation to help grip struggling prey, although many later theropods lost this feature. However, if there is one feature that distinguishes Crylophosaurus from other theropods, it is the strange comb-shaped crest that runs across the head above the eyes. This feature even earned it the nickname Elvisaurus, based on its similarity to the iconic hairstyle of the king of rock and roll. While other theropods, especially some of the early ones, possessed crests on their heads, Crylophosaurus is the only one known to run across the skull's width rather than along its length. Although the crest appears tiny, the addition of keratin likely made it much larger. Since the crest is too thin and fragile to have been used for combat, paleontologists believe it was likely for display purposes, and may have been used to attract mates and intimidate rivals. Although some studies suggest that it may have been used to help individuals identify others of their own species. It is unknown whether or not this crest is exclusive to one gender, or even if its size varied between individuals and some speculative artwork puts forward other theories about the purpose of its headgear, with one portrayal giving it a massive crest that almost resembles the antlers of a deer, while another proposes fern-like extensions that served as camouflage to help it sneak up on its prey. Regardless, it is likely that this crest played a big role in the animal's life, whether it helped in finding a mate or helping to sneak up on prey. Cryolophosaurus was a carnivore, and was likely the top predator of its environment. Its primary source of food was likely the basal sauropodomorph Glacialosaurus, which has been estimated to reach a length of 7 meters or 22 feet long, and a weight of around 4 to 6 tons. However, it likely ate whatever it could catch, including an unnamed heterodontosaur, sauropod, and coelophysoid, the fish Oreochyma, an unnamed dimorphodontid pterosaur, and even a small cynodont called a tritolodont, the remains of which were found in the stomach cavity of the type specimen of Cryolophosaurus. It likely coexisted with a wide variety of animals, however the harsh conditions of the fossil formations mean that it is difficult to recover more fossils. Cryolophosaurus is the only known large theropod known from the Hansen Formation, and the only competition it would have faced likely would have been from other Cryolophosaurus. Although Antarctica is a frozen wasteland today, during the early Jurassic it was much warmer, due to it being about 1,000 kilometers or 621 miles further north than it is today. As such, the continent would, have, would likely have been covered in immense forests filled with a plethora of plant life, which could support a wide variety of animals. That being said, it likely was still the coldest place on Earth at the time, as Antarctica is believed to have had a cool, temperate climate during the early Jurassic. Current models of Jurassic airflow in the high altitude of the Hansen Formation indicate that Crylophosaurus and the rest of the Hansen flora and fauna likely lived more along coastal areas, which likely never dropped below freezing, 
as opposed to the much harsher conditions further inland. Given how relatively cold its environment was at the time, it's likely that Cryolophosaurus had a covering of filaments to help keep it warm. Now, we don't know much about the behavior of Cryolophosaurus, as behaviors rarely fossilize, but we can speculate certain aspects of the animal's behavior. For example, how it hunted. Cryolophosaurus appeared to have forward-facing eyes, giving it good depth perception. This is typical of predators, as depth perception is a great tool to use when stalking prey. Cryolophosaurus also likely had a somewhat good sense of smell to help track prey over long distances. It likely didn't have the endurance to chase down prey for long periods of time, and likely ambushed its prey. Cryolophosaurus's primary weapon for killing prey was likely its razor-sharp teeth, although it may have also used the claws on its hands and feet to pin and hold the prey in place to prevent a possibly deadly struggle. Of course, there are other aspects of an animal's behavior that, other than how it killed other animals. First, We've established that the unique crest on Cryolophosaurus's head was likely used to attract mates, and thus would have played a big role in courtship rituals. Now, no current evidence exists, it is possible that the crest may have been an indicator of health for males, meaning that females would be attracted to males with larger and more colorful crests. These crests could also be used to intimidate any rivals, with a larger crest determining the victor. Finally, it is likely that at least one parent, likely the female, would have raised the young, as maternal behaviors are believed to be very basal in the dinosaur family tree, and persist even to this day with modern birds. If only the females raised the young, the males may have mated with several different females, which would provide a better chance for their genes to be passed on. Baby Cryolophosaurus likely would have been in the care of their mother for about two to three years, after which they would be capable of caring for themselves and thus would leave to live on their own. Beyond mating, Cryolophosaurus were likely solitary animals, each having a territory of several hundred square miles each that they would fight fiercely for. Although larger prey could attract several individuals, who would inadvertently work together to bring down the prey, only to fight over it afterwards. That's really all the more conservative speculations we can make about the behavior of Cryolophosaurus, although it is extremely possible that this animal had some incredibly weird aspects of its behavior that we will never know because it simply cannot fossilize. Now, Given the fact that few fossils have been recovered, we don't know exactly when Cryolophosaurus disappeared from the fossil record, or even how it went extinct. There are typically two ways that a genus or a species goes extinct. The first is the way that most people think of when referring to extinct animals, in which the organism is wiped out by some major event, which can result from a change in climate, loss of a primary food source, new competition, or in more recent cases, overhunting by humans. And, it was, and as a result, the organism leaves no living descendants. The second is based around the process of speciation, in which populations evolve to form distinct species. In this process, several closely related species or genera typically evolved from a single common ancestor which over time split into different populations with different environmental pressures that caused each population to become distinct from each other. This is different from the first method in, while, in that while the ancestor may be extinct, descendants of that animal may still exist. The problem with Cryolophosaurus is it could really be either one of these, we just don't know. This is due to the very scant fossil record of Antarctica, especially during the Mesozoic era. The thing is, we just don't have any fossils from after the early Jurassic until the early Companion of the late Cretaceous, a gap of about 188 to 80 million years. 
That's an over 100 million year gap. Because of this tremendous gap, we don't know anything about what Antarctica was like during the rest of the Jurassic or the early part of the Cretaceous. We may not have any concrete factors that may have led to Cryolophosaurus' extinction. No evidence of a change in the climate or environment. No evidence of competition or the loss of a food source. Nothing. This doesn't mean that's not what occurred. We just have no evidence for it. It's just as equally possible that Cryolophosaurus simply evolved into several different species or genuses. Maybe Antarctica was filled with weird crusted predators all throughout the Mesozoic. We just don't know. And based on the fact that Antarctica is one of the most desolate places on Earth, where only a few hundred scientists placed on remote outposts live, we might never know, find out exactly what happened to Cryolophosaurus. But who knows? Maybe we will find some late Jurassic or early Cretaceous fossils from Antarctica that will give us more information on prehistoric life at the South Pole. Only time will tell. Cryolophosaurus has made several appearances in TV shows, video games, and even a comic strip. It features somewhat prominently in the first episode of the Discovery Channel documentary, Dinosaur Revolution, which I'll likely cover more in depth in my scientific analysis series. Cryolophosaurus also features in the PBS series Dinosaur Train, specifically in the characters King and Crystal. This show clearly took some inspiration from the Elvis resemblance when coming up with this character, these characters, as they are both singers, with King especially taking a lot of inspiration from Elvis. Cryolophosaurus in this show are portrayed as living in the Cretaceous alongside the other dinosaurs in the show, rather than the Jurassic period. They're also so shown to be sexually dimorphic as King has a blue crest and snout and a crest that arches forward almost like an upside down J, which was likely intentional to make him resemble Elvis even more. While Crystal has a bright red crest and snout as well as blue feet, with a crest that is shaped more like a bow, which ironically resembles the actual animal's crest more than King's does. That being said, the Cryolophosaurus designs aren't too inaccurate, especially since Dinosaur Train does have educational elements in it. Finally, the animal makes a brief appearance in the anime Dinosaur King in the episode Mesozoic Meltdown as one of the dinosaurs in the possession of the show's villain, Seth. It has a mystery element and is around the size of the actual animal, although it is much more heavily built. Its blue coloration is also unlikely for a predator that would have to sneak up on its prey. Cryolophosaurus has also made several appearances in video games as well. The first game it appears in is Warpath Jurassic Park, a fighting game for the PlayStation, as an unlockable character. It is given a nearly identical moveset to T-Rex and Acrocanthosaurus, except that instead of using its jaws to attack, it uses its crest, which we have established was too fragile for combat. Cryolophosaurus is also much larger and more heavily built than its real-life counterpart. More recently, Cryolophosaurus has appeared in Primal Carnage and its sequel, Primal Carnage Extinction, where it is simply an alternate skin for Dilophosaurus. Since Dilophosaurus is given the ability to spit venom in Primal Carnage, something I hope everyone watches this knows is inaccurate, Cryo was given the same ability, but in the second game they did change it to Acid. As of right now, Cryolophosaurus hasn't made any appearances in a feature length film and its portrayals and media range from being decently accurate to looking like it was designed by an awesome bro in his mom's basement. Hopefully it will get featured in more documentaries in the future where it can be portrayed more accurately. Well, that wraps up this video on Cryolophosaurus. I hope you enjoyed this latest video and that you learned something new today. 
My next video is currently planned to be the scientific analysis of Jurassic Fight Club Episode 3, Gang Killers, followed by Episode 4, Bloodiest Battle, although I might decide to squeeze in another creature profile somewhere in, in there. The current plan for creature profile is to cover more winter-themed animals. The next in this series will cover the Arctic Tyrannosaur, Nanuxaurus. After that, I will cover the Arctic Troodont, and then Lystrosaurus. I may include more polar animals, depending on how many I can squeeze in before spring, but I'll keep it safe at 3 for now. Requests are also more than welcome for future episodes. This video took much less time to make than my other videos, so expect a lot of these. That's it for now. You all enjoy your winter holidays. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, you know what, Happy Holidays. That's all for today. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in a new year with another video.